Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? The Chabakucha. Our modern world rests alongside a supernatural one. The two worlds are more intertwined than we'd like to admit. Be warned, but also be comforted by the fact that experiencing the dark side of the supernatural is all just a matter of timing. Two 12-year-old girls from South Korea, Mi and Jin, had just arrived at camp for the summer. Both had never been before, although Mi frequently camped with her family. Their first day was exciting, getting to know their fellow campers and doing outdoor activities. At the end of the day, the camp quickly quieted down during the night, but Jen couldn't sleep. She wanted to explore more of the campgrounds at night. She woke up Mi and fibbed that she needed someone to go to the bathroom with her. Jen knew if she told Mi her true intentions that she would never go. Mi always followed the rules, while Jen would question why there were rules in the first place. Once they arrived at the small building holding the bathrooms, Jen figured she might as well go while she figured out how to get Mi to go exploring. Mi, eager to get back to bed, told her, I'll stay out here and wait for you. As soon as Jen entered the bathroom, she felt something was off. It was freezing in there. She flipped the light switch on, one dimly lit bulb flickered on, just barely enough to make out the bathroom stalls directly in front of her. Shivering, suddenly having to go to the bathroom more than ever, she started moving towards the stalls. Reaching out her hand to the first stall, she felt something like strands of hair whip across her face. Stunned, she jumped back. In the corner of her eye, something moved off to the right of her. Spinning towards it, a woman with long black hair covering her face stood in the corner, silent, waiting. Jen abruptly turned around and sped out the door. Grabbing me, she pushed her towards the path back to their cabin. All thoughts of exploration forgotten, Jen couldn't have seen what she just saw. It must have been her imagination getting the best of her. Are you okay? Me chuckled. I thought for sure you got me out here so you could go exploring. Jen stammered. I thought I saw something, someone, a camper maybe? She, it kind of looked like something from a horror movie. I don't know. Me stopped dead in her tracks, looking behind Jen at the bathroom door. Wait, she looked very concerned. What's the date? Jen stopped, staring at me, wondering what was going on. Me continued worriedly. It's the Chakuchin, on dates with a six in it. The only way to safely use a bathroom at night is to cough three times before entering and to carry food as tribute. Otherwise, the Chaakuchin could find you. The good news is that there is only one of her and she is only in one bathroom at a time. If she is here, you must appease her. Jen blinked, staring at me, waiting for her to say she was joking. Appease her? Yes, you must appease her or she will follow you home. Having said that, Mi pulled a dry rice ball from her pocket and ran back toward the outhouse, placing it at the doorway. The two girls ran back to their cabin. By the time Jen had tucked herself back into her bunk, she remembered how weird Mi could be at times with her superstitions. And also, she was more convinced than ever it had to just have been another camper using the bathroom. Around midnight, Jen woke up having to go so badly that she didn't even think to wake up me as she dashed out of bed and ran to the bathroom building. When she got to the bathroom door, fear struck her and stopped her dead in her tracks. I could just go outside, I guess, she thought as she swung her flashlight back out towards the dark, dark woods surrounding and encroaching upon the bathroom building. Or not, Jen quickly thought to herself, look, the rice ball is still there, so the Chaakuchin is appeased. And besides, that's all stupid anyway. I've been using bathrooms all my life. I'll be quick. After Jen stepped inside, she then remembered what she had forgotten to do, to cough three times. Jen felt thick strands of hair quickly coil around her neck like a snake. Confused, she reached for the hair to pull it away, but it tightened, trapping her, strangling her so she couldn't make a sound. Lifted into the air by her neck, the pressure increasing around it, the long strands surrounded Jen, wrapping her in a deadly embrace. The Chaakuchen sat on the ceiling, 
It was the woman-like figure that Jen had seen before. Lifting her new prey up into her arms, the goddess pushed its face against hers, breathing in the shallow breaths coming out of Jen's body. I would have followed you home, but I was too hungry. So this time, it will only be you. At that, the Cha'akuchin moved towards the toilet, which transformed into a bottomless pit. The goddess hurriedly dragged Jin's hair-wrapped body down into the pit with her. She was in such a hurry that the stall changed back into a toilet before her entire body came through, cutting off Jin's left arm, leaving the chopped limb in the stall for the other campers to find the next morning. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast. Available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. Thank you to all of our patrons. While we do run a limited amount of ads, the show would not be possible without your support. If you want to keep these videos coming, please visit patreon.com snarled. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings. Sweet dreams.